Hello, my name is Emma Finch. Welcome to my lovely studio here in Manchester. I'm a professional portrait photographer and I specialise in photographing women. I absolutely love it. So much so that I've based my entire career on photographing the female form. Now, I often get asked when I'm teaching how best to pose a woman. And there are a number of tips and techniques that I use, which I'm going to share with you today to get the best out of the woman in front of your lens. Follow me. Today in the studio, we have Mary Jean Saxton, a very experienced and popular model. She's going to be demonstrating the do's and don'ts of posing. So with portraiture, the face, of course, is the most important part of the image. But after the face, I think hands can really make or break an image. They're so important. We're going to show you some of the hand positions that we don't want, first of all. So we don't want the banana. Mm. <laughs> it's a bit awkward. Hands are splayed out, doesn't look all together very elegant or very feminine. We also don't want the fist. So when people are nervous in front of the camera, they tend to hold their, their tension in their hands so that their fists are, are, are tight. Um, doesn't show the subject to be very relaxed. We also don't want the spatula. So fingers are pressed together, doesn't look very relaxed, looks a little bit awkward. It's a bit robotic. It does look it? robotic. Yeah. And we don't want claw. <laughs> My personal favourite. <laughs> it's not <laughs> Halloween. Um, so what do we want? We want relaxed, graceful, ballet hands, uh, very feminine, very elegant. Uh, we don't want to show too much the palm of the hand because that's quite bright and that will catch the light. We want to show more the side of the hand. And where, where your subject touches in an image tends to be where the, where the eyes follow. So you can really draw attention to the areas in the image that you, you want to highlight. So let's take a look at some of the images that worked and some of the images that didn't work. Here we have the bananas, the claw, the fist, all make Mary Jean look tense. Fingers aren't graceful, elegant or feminine. As we can see here, anything coming towards the camera looks bigger, whereas anything moving away looks smaller. And we can clearly see here, her elbow looks bigger than her head. Be mindful to keep the entire body in proportion. Moving the elbow out to the side in this case would be a much more flattering pose. Now let's see how just changing the hand position can dramatically alter the final image. Angles create a more dynamic image. Having visual space around the waist shows Mary Jean's shape. Arms are bent and act as a leading line to the face. The eyes flow around the shape of her body and stay within the image. So, curves. Photographing a woman, we want to see the female form at all times. We want to see curves. How do we do that? So, firstly, you can see that Mary Jean has turned her body 45 degrees to camera. What that does, firstly, it's slimming. Not that you need it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and secondly, it's showing her form. It's showing her shape better. She's dropped her weight onto one hip. What that's doing is it's accentuating the curve of the hip in comparison to the waist and she has her arms bent. A straight arm never looks great in an image. Uh, the number one rule is if it bends, bend it. It always looks good to have arms, wrists bent, to have some visual space around the waist so you can see that female form. So let's take a look at some images. Create curves on any body shape by dropping the weight onto one hip, thereby accentuating the waist. For the more curvy woman, you can even ask them to bend forward just slightly to camera to put the body more into proportion. So, legs, also really important in an image. At the end of the day, all us women want longer legs, don't we? Yeah, please. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we're going to show you how not to pose, first of all. So as you can see, Mary Jean has her feet flat on the floor. What that's doing is it's shortening her legs. She's leaning back in the chair. That's mm -hmm. making her head look smaller in comparison to her knees. Anything coming towards the camera is going to look bigger. Anything moving away is going to look smaller. So how do we correct it? How do we put everything back in proportion? First of all, if she comes up on her tiptoes, that immediately elongates the legs. She's leaning forward, which means her body is more in proportion. If she brings her legs more to the side, it makes legs look even longer still. And you can already see the difference in the pose. Now, for supermodel long legs, we want the body on a plane. One second. <laughs> <laughs> so bringing her legs off to the side so that everything is on the same plane makes everybody's legs look super long. And after all, that's what we want, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> 
Legs that are posed more to the side appear much longer than legs coming towards the camera. Another tip to elongate legs in a standing pose is to shoot from a slightly lower angle, which makes your subject look taller, longer and generally more powerful. Shooting on the longer end of your lens will keep the body more in proportion. In addition to posing, lighting is just as important in creating the most flattering images of women. Here are some examples of my own award-winning images using my signature dark and moody lighting. The best light is the softest light. I use Optiboxes with double diffusion to really modify the light. Making sure the light is angled correctly means that you can highlight the areas you want to see and minimise those you don't. Feathering the light creates an even softer light. To minimise double chins, having your light higher than your subject creates shadow and definition under the jawline as we can see here. Composition also plays a part. Cropping at a woman's narrowest point is always slimming, so cropping at the waist or mid-thigh is much more flattering than across the chest or the hips. Never crop at a joint, make your composition look intentional, and it's always helpful to tell your model or client how you are composing so they can pose accordingly. After all, they don't need to point their toes if you're only shooting head and shoulders. So I hope you enjoyed this short presentation, maybe picked up a few pointers. If you'd like to find out more about working with models, studio lighting or portraiture in general, take a look at sessiondays.co.uk. Unique portraiture in unique locations.